I have a I have a fun challenge here. It, it's a, more of a more of a story time with all of us here, uh, and it reads as follows. I was wondering if you have any examples of times where you thought you knew something, but then actually watched or read it or whatever and were surprised. You know, the truth was not what it seemed. We were talking about the Mandela show earlier, uh, but I can lead with an example. Uh, now this was this was something, the, the, the example from the challenger was I started reading The Strange Case of Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and was very surprised at how different I thought it was just from how it's portrayed in other media. So to me, uh, I'll, I'll share a story that might be tangentially related. I was convinced I knew how my cousin met his wife. Uh, so I have a cousin who is very, very, very smart and he was uh, taking his PhD in, I don't know, being a genius in mathematics uh, in the University of Australia. And his wife was from Iceland. And I'm like, how, and he's originally from Canada. So I'm like, how on earth did these two meet? And I was like, oh, I know. Um, he's a big metal head and he'll often time going to metal festivals with like other science and smart person conferences. So he's like, oh, I'm going to go to Europe and I will go speak at this panel. And while I'm there, I will also go see the metal and you know, they met at each other, they met presumably in a pit, and I don't know, maybe she like kicked him in the head or whatever, and I'm like, that's great. They met at a metal show, and, and now they live together in Australia, and it's like, true love, right? And um, I went to their wedding, and I was like, that was so cool how you two met each other, and I started explaining to him how he met his wife, and he's just like, what? <laughs> that That's not true. I'm like, well, what do you mean that's not true? Like. She's from Europe, you live in Australia, how could you possibly met? She's like, I, I had an, an Icelandic roommate and she lived like three doors down from me. Just, what? <laughs> and it turns out that I had completely fabricated all of it. There wasn't an ounce of truth anywhere in there. She hates metal music and it was That's just out of coincidence. So I don't know how I went about creating, completely fabricating that entire story, but uh, yeah, sometimes truth and the world as you know it aren't aren't quite in Co that much yeah. cohesion. Ah. Let this be a lesson. Always keep your friend fiction separate from reality. <laughs> Very important. Very important. Anybody else have embarrassing stories where you uh, you uh, your head cannon didn't quite align with the reality of the world? I have one that I, I you know I'm over fifty. I'm I'm willing to admit that. So I believed a story. Okay. For. 51 years as being a certain way. Okay. So I have two younger brothers, and they're close in age. And uh, our mother passed on when we were quite young, so I ended up parenting them for the most part. So there was lots of issues. There was lots of band-aids. There was lots of trips to the hospital. You know, it was my job. I was in charge of first aid. Sure. So, <clears throat> when they were quite young, they were probably four and five, and they are right now, wherever they are, so angry at me that I am telling this story. Uh, too bad. Uh, so, they were four and five, and one of them was in the bathroom, and I heard a big squelch, and I was the only adult home, and I tapped on the door, and I said, are you okay? And the little voice said, no. So I tapped again, and I'm like, are you okay? And they're like, no. And I'm like, well, open the door, unlock it so I can come in and help you. And the little voice said, I'll wait for Dad to come home. And I'm like, mm, that's like five hours from now. I don't think you really want to wait that long. Please open the door. So then the promise was, as long as I promise not to look, they would open the door. So I was like, okay, that's oh, a fair oh, deal. Okay. Yeah, I won't look. Unlock the bathroom door. So I got in there and one of my brothers had zipped an important part of themselves <laughs> into was... their jean zipper. Uh, and ah! and, and was so, so there was a family discussion about how one might repair this issue. And I was mechanical, thank God, thank God, I, I was mechanical, and I decided that pliers and removing the bottom part of the zipper was probably better than backing the zipper up. God. I just seemed to me to be the better method. So I disappeared to go get the pliers, you know, the needle those pliers, to just open that bottom part up. 
free the tra entrapped flesh so that it could be better. Sure. So I was pretty proud of my ingenuity. Okay. Right? Because I, I, and for like 51 years, I've said, you owe me, man. I saved your manhood. Sure. Right? Like, I don't know how many times I've dropped that line. Like, hey, I saved your life. Remember when I saved your life? Sure. It was the wrong brother. <laughs> <laughs> it's 51 years. I was sure all the times I said to brother, David, I saved you from, you know. Finally, <laughs> the other brother says, oh, no, it was me. Yeah. And I'm like, no, no. He's like, I got the scars to prove it. Oh, I'm like, I can't believe I've had that wrong for so many years. It's you who owes me forever. Oh, that's incredible. Hey. All right, true, when we, that's all true. When we Sorry. pitched this challenge, Julie ran into the room with a smile. So I want to hear this story. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the haiku because that didn't happen. Uh, <laughs> but no, no. Uh, mine's, mine's quick and has less body horror. Um, <laughs> my, fourth, my, my fourth grade homeroom teacher's name was... Cal Johnson. Oh. oh. <laughs> okay. I like it. I thought he was on body break. <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't. I wouldn't believe. 